Hey, it's mid-fall. Fall is the time when I like to chase big walleyes. And I'll tell you what, right now, Lake Oahe is absolutely full of not just big walleyes, we're talking giant walleyes. This is my good buddy, Chad Schilling. I kind of call him the mayor of Akaska, <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, what's going on on this body of water is so special right now. And I, I just can't wait to get out there and uh, catch a couple of those giants. I've been, the last couple of years, I've been watching what you guys have going on out here in the fall. And uh, to be out here getting ready to head out is awesome. But one thing's for sure, we're gonna have a good time. And I know we're gonna bring you the, the next, next bite. bite. Lake Oahe is a world-class walleye fishery, and right now it's one of the best places you can go to catch a giant walleye. Yeah, that's a Heck really yeah, nice fish. 18, 19 inches probably? Heck yeah. Yeah, that's... Boy. You know, and that, they're healthy. I mean, they're all super healthy. This one is probably on the leaner end, but <laughs> yeah, all summer we would have been begging I mean, for one of these. It has become so good that tournament anglers are struggling to catch an under during a day of fishing. Unders are fish that fall under the slot limit of 20 inches. All right, guys, we're going to do a quick talk about the bait here. When you get south of Highway 212, it's predominantly a rainbow schmelt fishery, but they're a little bit deeper. 14 to 18 or even 20 inch fish congregate towards those. Like that southern end has more of those fish. From 212 north, we have both gizzard shad and lake herring, and the giant walleyes will focus on them. As you go north, the system turns back into a spot tail shiners or there's a tremendous population of them north of here. It's just like I said, it's several fisheries inside itself and none of it's simple, but pay attention to what they're eating and that'll help you base what bait you want to run. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, this one is going to be a nettable one. A nice walleye. Is it? Yep. Heck yeah. Whoop. All right. Heck yeah. Yeah, it's a nice fish for sure. Nice job, Tom. Boy, he has a face full there, huh? Do you want to grab that pliers? Yep. Yeah, he's got a face full of flicker minnow. Oh yeah, he smashed it. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice Oahe fish right there. That's he's got a little scar. He's been yeah. nailed by a pike or something. That's what we call probably a heartbreaker right there. Just, yeah. just a little bit over the he's line just there. Just over but... 20, but. So anytime we're talking about Lake Oahe, Primarily in the fall, there's a few important things to pay attention to as these fish begin to migrate and set up for the winter. We're about, I would say, mid-fall right now. So there's a couple things that I'm gonna pay attention to, to to help me get on the fish, get on the big fish in particular. Number one is the bait fish, okay? As we've heard and we know, the herring kind of rule the big fish world on this lake, which is really cool, okay? but the important thing is to be fishing areas that these lake herring uh, really are prolific in. The Swan Creek area in particular, it has the perfect setup for, for these lake herring. Therefore, you know, there's always a lot of big fish around. But what happens out here in the fall is that these fish will begin to migrate and really congregate up here in the Swan Creek area. We've got the Moreau River right across the reservoir. So not only are these fish here to feed, but they're also here staging. And if you can find areas that have a combination of deep water, plenty of food near their spawning areas, you're, that's a perfect recipe for big fish. And that's what the Swan Creek area delivers, and that's why we're here today. The next bite 
is brought to you by Mercury Marine, Go Boldly, Schaefer's Specialized Lubricant, Putting Equipment First, Nitro Boats, Performance Fishing Boats, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, Your Adventure Starts Here, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, and Power Pole, Total Boat Control. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Whitewater, built to brave the waves. You hear it all the time, match the hatch. That often requires knowledge of the body of water that you're fishing. Look at shad you dropped on him, huh? I did, number seven. Well, you know, we've kind of had a little bit of a cold snap here and this water is dropping a little bit. And... Well, and that's the exact same size as the new gizzard shad. The young of the year, all the white bass, we have millions of little white bass in the system. So I don't know nothing that would represent that better. Often you can find that information online, but if you can't find that info, that means you'll have to spend more time in the water and go through different baits until you find what is working. So in crankbait fishing, there's so many different sizes, shapes, colors to choose from. And you know, one of the things that you definitely need to pay attention to <clears throat> no matter what body of water that you're on, is pay attention to the forage, okay? So in a situation like this, we're on Lake Oahe, there's been a recent boom of gizzard shad, okay? So these fish have, have really turned on to more of your, your shad profiles. Of course, like the Berkeley flicker shad. This was a really good bait for us um, for, for the slot fish. But then as you move up, there's there's other profiles and shapes. The number nine flicker minnow was hands down the best bait for us here. The number nine has a little bit uh, more of a subtle action, but then as we move up, either the number 11 flicker shad, or now we've got another choice, and that's the number 12 hit stick. The hit stick, in my opinion, is a much more aggressive bait, and when the fish are really fired up, you're gonna get a lot more bites on this. The flicker minnow is the one that I'm going to lean to when the conditions are a little bit tougher and the fish are being a little bit more finicky. At least that's what they showed us here this week. Yeah, that's a big boy there. That's a nice fish. Yeah, it's, it is a nice fish. It's always a tough call, you know, but it seems like you want to try to just keep them up once they come once up, Once they're right? there, I keep them there too, yep. yeah. I'll grab the net for you, Tom. All right, sounds good. Listen, I'm just gonna keep him coming at yep, you. you keep him coming, I'll scoop him right here. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> keep him skiing, right? <laughs> well, Man, it's, a... like you said, you're only wrong until you are on that deal. You just gotta, Yeah. I, mean, I don't like slowing down, and when they're up there, just keep them sliding. No, I just, you don't wanna go, let them get down. You might as well just let them stay up on the surface, keep them coming in. That fish thought it was definitely about a six or seven pounder. It identifies as a six or seven right, pounder, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that's a really nice slot fish though. Super healthy fish. Exactly what everybody's looking for all summer. Yep, number Just seven dumped flicker another minnow. Flicker shad. I'm sorry, flicker shad. Yeah, number seven flicker shad. You know, they really seem to like those green back baits. Today. Boy, today it has been green. Yep, no doubt. Well, let's get this one. In. Let's get this one back in and go get another one. Like a plan. There we go. Let's get her back. Control presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from total boat control. So one thing I always like to do um, and have prepared in my boat and just, you know, being efficient is replacement hooks for crankbaits. And I like to have and, and carry a, a couple different boxes. You know, first is the EWG style Fusion 19s uh, for baits like your flicker shads um, that in you know, hit sticks that, you know, carry that EWG style hook um, or, you know, a box of the round bends like I have here on the Money Badger. But to me, it's just one of those things where if you have them with you, even if it's a rollover point or if it's a hook that's been bent out from being snagged so many times, it's, 
You know, generally when a hook gets bent out after getting it out of a snag and you bend it back, that tempering isn't there anymore and it isn't gonna be as strong as it was when it started. And so as long as you have one available, you're probably gonna change it when you need to. But let's face it, if it's at home and you wanna do it later because you don't have it with you, it's gonna go in the box and it's gonna be in the box when you go to grab it again. So to me, this is just one of those small things that just makes you a better angler because you have your equipment at the top notch it should be and it just get, makes you work a lot more efficiently on the water and to me it's peace of mind i feel like i have less things to do when i get off the water okay guys our presentation here what we're doing is something that's tried and true on oahe forever running lead core rods in the last few years people have really uh caught on to the snap weights, um, three-way rigs. It can be what we're using is the snap weight. And so what we do is we dump about 30 to 50 feet of line on, depending on what, where you want to be, add the snap weight and send that uh, line down on braid. What it does is it spreads your baits out. One's back 220, this one very rarely ever hits 100 feet out. And it just keeps your baits in different vicinities. Uh, one will go by a little bit later, maybe they let the first one go by, they see the second one coming and they can't resist. So it saves you a lot of tangles, it's a simple, it's a very simple way to do it, and it uh, just makes life a lot easier. Get in here. Get in here. Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I chickened out. Oh. I... Are you oh! kidding me? Get back in here. <laughs> I got your lid open on your motor. <laughs> oh, man. While you're checking the oil back there yeah, for me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go, bud. Oh, yeah. That's a nice fish there. Easy. Boy, it didn't, uh, it whacked that thing, but it didn't have a ton of hooks in oh, it. Oh man, I was panicking looking at slide up there. That was a heck of a net job, that's for sure. Well, nice fat fish, look at that. Wow, thing. I mean, it's uh, it's the one you, we wouldn't want to catch at a tournament, but couldn't look better today. Right, I mean, it's right, a, what, yeah. 22, maybe yeah, a little I'd better say 22, than that? Yeah, 22, 23, just, just a, a nice fat fish here. So what we're doing today is contour trolling, okay? One of the keys to contour trolling is obviously staying on your brake lines or running the contours of the lake. Today we found that there's two different depth zones that the fish are hanging at. Uh, one is about 30 to 32, the other one seems to be about 35 to 38. So not too far off depth wise, but as far as the contours go, th that can be a long ways off. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna drop my kicker motor in, get my speed set with that, which today we're running speeds around two to 2.2 miles an hour, typical crankbait speeds. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna use my bow mount and I'm actually gonna steer with my bow mount, taking advantage of one more piece of technology. So utilize that technology next time you're out here on the lake and you're gonna catch a lot more fish. <laughs> I could have brought a towel, I could have cleaned the yeah. boat while you were doing this, you know. Well, the there good news again. is we got it all day, you know. Yep. Bad news is it's only a half hour show. <laughs> we've, we've never seen giant fish like this. In, my, in anyone's lifetime, in the history of the reservoir, this is as good as it gets right now to come out and catch a fish of a lifetime. And here we go, 20. Now we're coming, grab the net, Tom. You're gonna get a look right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a giant. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> look at the oh. size of that beast. Oh my chilling. Look at the face on that thing. Did you literally have me reel in a 17, 18 yeah. incher while this one was on the other rock? <laughs> one hook. Yeah. One Let hook. Let me give you a hug. Oh Holy my God. smokes, man. I, oh. man. Get, get in here. <laughs> Let me shut the big engine off. Did you just back down to catch up to a wall? Yeah. Look at the size of that thing, dude. <laughs> Oh my God. That, that is a beast. I've never backed down. I had to back down on a walleye until today. She was barely hooked and had all her power. She, we, had, we took nothing away from her. Oh man, I'll tell you what, man. That's a giant, bud. I gotta tell you, this is the reason that you come out here. We've been talking about it. 
What's we crazy, finally got it. What's crazy is everyone's been, this has been the fall of all falls to catch these. Yeah. And you go out and you can't catch your eaters. And we have wailed on the eaters. Oh my gosh. I but mean, we only takes one of these to make your whole year. And, oh my gosh. <laughs> you, oh my. You throw her back. What a stud. Look at that piece. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get her back in here. All right, girl. Boom! <laughs> She's tired. I can't imagine why. She fought for 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, a fish like that. There's the genetics you want in a system. There she goes. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricant. Putting equipment first. Nitro Boats. Performance Fishing Boats. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Lowrance, the ultimate fishing system. And Power Pole, total boat control. <laughs> Topics, leading information and tackling techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. So one of the things that I think all anglers look at with these larger outboards is great performance and also hopefully getting good fuel economy. As far as performance goes, this motor is unlike anything I've ever seen. I mean, I'm talking in this ZV21 Nitro, I'm seeing 67, 68 miles an hour when I'm fully loaded with two guys, all the way above 70 miles an hour several times this year when I'm a little bit lighter. But the thing that I really love about this motor is the fuel economy, honestly. And when I'm talking about wide open throttle, so going almost 70 miles, miles an hour I'm only burning 30 to 31 gallons per hour at those speeds which is legitly a 30 plus percent increase on what we've seen in the past L6 Verados that these new V10s have taken over but let me tell you something else that I really like about this thing. You get all the digital capabilities that you had in the past with the old Verado. Digital throttle, electric hydraulic steering, but also 87 octane gas. You're able to get maximum performance with just using regular octane gas now. So V10 Verado has all the great things of the past, major improvements with performance and also fuel economy. So if you're in the market for a big outboard, definitely check this beast out. You are going to be surprised. Lake Oahe is the best place to be if you want to catch a trophy walleye. Based on location, try your best to match the hatch in a diverse fishery and get your baits into the strike zone near the bottom. What is in here? What did you? Oh, are you kidding me? A I tumbleweed. Where that tumbleweed. Tom, Tom, right? Oh my gosh, Tom. This, are you kidding this me? This is what we were looking for. What do you need That's me to do? That's why we slowed down what right there. What do you there. need me to do? You're good. Not run over tumbleweeds while I'm fighting, if you would. <laughs> that was so awesome. Oh, that is so I literally cool. trimmed the motor up, kicked it in reverse, and your rod just went, oh, oh. <laughs> You just said too, you're like, oh, they're laying right on the brake again. And that's the thing with these big fish and being them herring, they move up and down so much. So we're about 12 feet here is all it says, but I could have easily bumped it. She's gonna have a little more spunk than that other one did here at the top. So we don't need to rush it. She's right here. Here she comes. Yeah! <laughs> Look at the size of that thing! <laughs> oh my god. I know there's never been a time you and I have been this quiet. Oh, just yeah. praying. Are you kidding me oh, right now? Oh my goodness. Hey, green dragon. Look at that fish. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fish. Wow, buddy. Man. You know, I'll it, tell you was what. it easy? Not even close. We're not no. going to try to show you that. We worked, but when you go catch 
lifetime fish. I mean, giant, giant walleyes. And who this one's a story, buddy. That was something. Oh yeah, they, they <laughs> definitely made us work for them. But I'll tell you what, I mean, these fish fight so hard out here. Oh, we don't <laughs> shut up. In the last 30 seconds, he said, I think I was yeah. going to pass out. I'd held my breath the whole time. What That's a, what we were doing. So. What a beautiful fish. Look oh, at that thing. My God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, hey, I'll tell you what, Chad. This has been something that's long overdue for us to I share the boat together. I mean, and uh, to, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy uh, guide life here to share the boat. I mean, this is chasing down these fish. There's no place that I love fishing more than the Missouri River. Number nine is Flicker Minnow. If I mean immediate too. We I have just to, dumped that bait. I'm gonna have to keep my eyes peeled on you as many baits as you're rifling through here trying to come up with the, the magic. It's a nice fish fry model I was, here. Huh? I always wanted to fish with the next bite crew again. I fished with Gary a long time ago. I was hoping to get chased, but I guess I'll go with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Sloppy thirds. <laughs> He's so big the plug can even run while it's in his mouth. What did you call it? What's a plug? <laughs> Great mate, all right. <laughs> the skinny one. I mean, you gotta work hard to catch a skinny one out here. Ooh, a little buddy. flicker shad fish, huh? You're living in 10 million bait fish and you're skinny? See you later. Congratulations on that nice pike, you Gotta Chad. fire that plug, huh? Yeah. <laughs> The next bite would like to thank Chad Schilling with Oahe Wings and Walleyes. If you're looking for top-notch fishing and hunting, choose Oahe Wings and Walleyes with the best pheasant hunting and walleye fishing in South Dakota. For information on guided hunting or fishing trips with lodging, please call 605-230-0280.